the very phrase political reading or political criticism may raise some doubts in young minds that how can these two come together because we generally relate criticism and reading with literature of course criticism is there in the political field that is a different matter and then politics is a part of our more pragmatic uh, day to day life however this is the very basic content contention of all political readings in fact we should term it political readings and not political reading because there are many kinds of it the basic contention is that the aesthetic domain in which we think or to which we think literature arts etc belong it is not separate from the political domain to explicate further uh for years together at least till the 60s of the last century reading understanding and appreciating literature had been more or less based on what we call aesthetic criteria truth um, universal human values and then beauty how a literature is beautiful or it talks about things of great value to life in english literature uh this tradition of criticism can be said to have been started by ben johnson and it culminated in uh, the uh, works of f r lewis the great tradition etc to the contrary the political critics or political readers they try to see please remember how works of art including literature they are actually mouth pieces of as it were different kinds of ideologies so the feminists argue that most of the so called great texts they extol male or patriarchal values rather similarly marxists they argue that the most of the so called great literature they uh, highlight and rather normalize or normativize the values of the capitalist class and help in imposing those values on the working class this is the communist basic now there are variations but you have to understand the basic first first similarly race criticism or critical race studies rather they try to show how mainstream european literature has been detrimental to the interest of the so called black people or non white races in general very similarly post colonial criticism and theory tries to show as i have spoken in details in my videos on post colonialism said etc post colonial criticism tries to show how the so called great literatures of europe and england they promote imperialist values directly or indirectly they promote colonialism they promote white supremacy these are all linked capitalism patriarchy imperialism racist white supremacy or for india i mean in india for instance a further development we can talk about how the dalit school of studies or dalit aesthetics tries to show that the so called indian literature or so called mainstream literature is based on the interest of the higher castes for example so the all these are examples of political readings i hope by now it is clear so this kind of readings what is the strategy if we talk about all this together different strategies are there specific to different groups but one common strategy is for example reading for absences a typical marxist reading of a victorian fiction or even a modern fiction or a contemporary novel for example may like to find what are the uh, or what is the amount of representation given to the working class in that novel which may well mean for this novels uh the so called servants 
I would rather prefer to call them domestic helps. So, servants in Indian fiction, people have worked on them. In fact, the, these domestic helps in many of our middle class, upper middle class or high class houses, actually it is they who put our house together, keep our house together by doing the daily shows, this and that. But how far are they represented in the novels that deal with middle class life or upper class life? So we hardly come across any. Uh, there are some exceptions maybe, but this is the general trend. And even if they come, they don't have names, they are not given much space, just one or two minor roles. So this is an example of reading for absence from class point of view. Uh, I would like to say something more on Marxist readings here because this is the most prominent political reading though perhaps this is the, not the first political reading. If we go chronologically, feminism in a way may be said to be the first political reading, defined political reading uh, starting with Mary Wollstonecraft and others, if not literature but of society. Marxism came a little later but this has been the most influential and remember as I said these are all related. There are further crisscrosses. There are Marxist feminisms for example or black feminism or post-colonial feminism. So as of now we will try to understand only the core constituents. So you know a typical Marxist analysis will show uh, unlike Levis and others who try to show how a literary work represents, a great literary work represents universal, ahistorical, humanist values. A side observation is that Levis has had his you know, Marxist investments, but he did not uh, carry it out to, the, uh, to its extreme form. Anyway, uh, so he struck with, he got stuck with general or universal humanism finally. So, a typical Marxist reading of a text, of a great text, will show or will try to examine how uh, it represents or promotes the ideologies of the bourgeois or the ruling class. All the kinds of values that are class hierarchy, you know, respecting the aristocrats, all these kinds of things, these are in Marxist language bourgeois values. So, they will try to see how a text promotes bourgeois values and if it does that, a hardcore Marxist will reject that text. At one point of time in Russia, a concept of so-called party literature came up which promoted only those kinds of writings which they felt would help in the class revolution which was the uh, dream of Marx. And in fact, the suppressed, banned, all those kinds of readings which did not seem to have any contribution to the proletariat's progress. However, this is general Marxism. Regarding literature, there have been great variations within Marxism itself, so far as its ideological orientations are concerned. Some Marxists, including Marx himself and even Engels, then people like Jörg Lukács, this people have indicated or stated often that art has or literature has a relative autonomy. It is not like the other social modes of production or other cultural modes of production which has to represent the ruling class ideology. Literature has its autonomy and it may go beyond the ruling class's ideology of any given epoch. So there are differences. And then here again there are subdivisions related to what kind of literature. That is very interesting. Jörg Lukács, he kind of upheld the classic realist novels of the 19th century or even before that, which are generally condemned by other Marxists as being bourgeois productions. But Jörg Lukács analyzed and showed how those very novels like uh, Tom Jones or Jane Austen novels or Dickens novels, they have this epic range. I have spoken about it repetitively almost, Lukács' theory on the novel as the epic of the modern age. So given their epic range and the kind of large canvas, they bring in different kinds of forces and uh, 
resources that are there in society they represent them and which may work against the ruling class ideology however uh, this is not the thought of later marxists like adorno horkheimer or we may say even althusser those kind of people i mean the later people especially adorno and horkheimer they found um, their favorites in say james joyce's ulysses for example which they argued that this kind of texts like ulysses or finnegan's wake by showing the fragmentation of the individual self in the 21st or uh, 20th century they bring to the fore the sufferings of the individual self under extreme capitalism and they by doing that representation they make an implicit criticism of capitalism leave is a uh, sorry uh, kind of lucas doesn't agree his argument is that by showing this alienations and other things the so called modern novels they sort of rather promote the capitalist agenda of further fragmentation alienation isolation of human beings so that they cannot stand together for movement resistance etc now it is up to you which version you will accept but um, you must have found it interesting that how within marxism there are different variations even so this is an introduction uh, to political readings so you can read certain books uh, like raymond williams culture and society an older book or i would like to recommend very much the name of another book political shakespeare by alan sinfield and jonathan dolimer the introduction is to i am addressing the students at least the introduction you can go through now and then there are further interesting uh, developments from this like cultural materialism new historicism on which i would uh, like to speak in greater details in my next videos so try to understand this in one word political reading is reading for hidden agenda hidden ideologies in literary texts under the mask of beauty love humanism etc etc so uh, start doing political reading consciously now thank you very much and then bring it to society also okay read against the grain read against the grain just an example another from colonialism since this is my area so colonialism the colonizers always justified their colonialism by saying that this is a socialized civilizing mission the people from the colonies like india africa they are uncivilized we are civilizing them this is what the stated but the hidden agenda was as we know to exploit the colonies so exploit the colonies take away our resources exploit ourselves so what politicians or political regime and state any and every and what actually is intended uh, this to may not be the same so that is why political reading is very important and not only for literary texts but for larger society you can take the case of media also we talk these days about critical literacy which is more important than literacy a literate person can read any newspaper in the language that he knows and he will believe everything but that person who has critical literacy will know what to take and what not to take compare the same news in other newspaper this is a way and who what one highlights and what one doesn't so newspaper the same with now uh, mass media i mean online all these things not print media so critical literacy reading against the grain reading for the hidden reading for absences all these are related terms and by doing all this you bring justice to greater number of people in society it takes to great number of people in society so uh, at least try to uh, read political shakespeare very interesting thank you very much